I'm Jeremy Cutsforth Gregory, Senior Associate Consultant in the Department of Neurology here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm excited to tell you today about our new study, Ganglionic Antibody Level as a Predictor of Severity of Autonomic Failure. The key finding of this study is that ganglionic acetylcholine receptor antibody level above 0.4 nanomoles per liter is a moderately sensitive and highly specific marker for severe autonomic failure. In contrast, the importance of low antibody levels, those less than 0.2, is dictated by clinical context. As an overview, I'll tell you about the autonomic nervous system. The peripheral autonomic nervous system is organized with two neurons connected in sequence. The relay stations between these two neurons are called ganglia, and their function depends on a type of receptor called the ganglionic nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. When this receptor is inactivated or blocked, patients develop a condition of widespread autonomic failure called autoimmune autonomic ganglionopathy, or AAG. In the late 1990s, folks in the neuroimmunology and autonomic labs here at Mayo Clinic discovered antibodies that target this particular receptor in about half of patients with AAG. More recently, limited phenotypes with mild or autonomic dysfunction have been described in association with this antibody. We sought to correlate the degree of autonomic failure with the ganglionic antibody level. We analyzed 289 patients who had undergone detailed autonomic testing around the time of detection of ganglionic antibodies in their blood. We did not limit our study to any particular clinical phenotype. Rather, we took all comers in order to capture the full range of possibilities in patients with positive ganglionic antibodies. What we found is in part to be expected. Higher antibody levels predicted more autonomic failure. We also found, however, that low antibody levels can't be used so reliably to predict. In terms of clinical practice and what this might mean for patients, I like to tell patients that a high ganglionic antibody level will predict abnormal autonomic testing, and it also likely suggests the underlying pathology. It's probably an immune-mediated disorder. Those particular patients may benefit from immunotherapies, although treatment response was not the focus of our current study. Even more common, we have to talk about low antibody levels. Since the ganglionic antibody test is often done as part of a panel of other antibodies, it will inevitably be positive in some patients who do not actually have autonomic autoimmune failure. Our study shows that antibody levels less than 0.2, particularly in patients without clinical features of autonomic failure, have little clinical importance. For the future of this antibody specifically, we need to correlate antibody levels with autonomic symptoms and other features not captured by the autonomic reflex screen. More broadly, the field of autoimmune neurology and our understanding of the role of autoantibodies and other autonomic disorders is growing. For example, postural tachycardia syndrome, or POTS, is an increasingly recognized disorder of orthostatic intolerance and other symptoms that in some cases may be due to autoantibodies and immune system dysfunction. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.